We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Head peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Hey, hey. we're here folks, this is it, we might be drunk Not yet, we're about to crack open a, a new bottle of something I've never heard of you well, heard that me. pop. I love the pop. It's a little natural wine. I don't even know what color it is, but I, natural. Aren't all wines natural? No, some are organic. Uh, this I, I don't know that I don't know a lot about wine. I know the difference. Organic wine. That all I know about this wine is the hangover is so much less. Oh, great! So that's huge. Yeah, it tastes good. Some of it is funky. You can get like an orange wine. It's kind of mm. trendy right now. I found out about this when we were on the road with. Aziz, it would be me, Phil Hanley, you know, whoever, uh, Will Sylvance, who didn't drink, but he'd be along for the ride. Yeah. Mat- Mateo, whoever, but uh, he would order these weird, funky wines and they tasted really weird and good. And we were never hung over. Wow. We'd be tired from the road. We'd be a little hung over. Yeah. That's the thing about, that's the thing about uh, hanging out with rich people is they teach you a few, few things about Look at that color. Glass. Wow. It looks like cider. Doesn't it? Yeah. Learned a lot from these, uh, you know, these rich people who took us on the road, and you I know, they like it. put the spoon on that side, the fork on this side. It was all felt Titanic. Like I was in... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't figure that out in Titanic. I didn't remember it. You know, it was like going to etiquette school again. What do you think? Cheers, cheers. Woo wee! Tell me what you think. It smells kooky. It's got a bite. It's kind of fun, right? I like it. I like it. If- we'll do. Let's do red next time. I, 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 I'm I'm a big wino guy because I like w- the drunk that wine gives you. It's a good loopy. You it's you sometimes can get belligerent on bourbon. Mm-hmm. You can get a little crazy on tequila. Oh yeah. Wine, you just get sloppy and silly, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, but that the red with the tongue, the thick wooden tongue, and the purple teeth, and the hangover is bananas. The hangover can be rough. It's not as bad with this. I don't. Oh, think. great. And it still gets you nice and fucked up. So, I like it. I'm into it. Carlin it's... was a wino. What? George Carlin went to rehab for wine. Is that right? Yeah. He would just. Wow. I'm sure there was other shit going on yeah. there. <laughs> a little nose candy, but I no, think, he was, as well. He was a wino. I had never, I've never heard him talk about drinking. That's fascinating. Yeah. And then it's funny to go to rehab for wine. It feels so romantic. <laughs> You know, it's the only type of rehab where they're like, "All right, pussy." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. Jesus, what year? <laughs> you know? It is. It is. This is nice. I kind of like it. Yeah, you know, they got rid of uh, what was it? Prohibition. They had prohibition. They said uh, alcohol was the meth of its day. Yeah. So they'd just be guys like in an alleyway, shit faced, or fallen over, or passed out. Interesting. Yeah, like farmers were big into booze, and they would just get drunk and lay in hay. Yeah, that was in that Ken Burns doc, right? Yes, the, yeah, yes. Yeah. And how like the barkeeps would run for office and stuff because yes. they were so popular. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Everything was built around booze. Like even stand up was like comics and gin joints and mafia nightclubs. Yeah, there's something about it, man. Something about prohibition too, where you're like, this isn't allowed. That's kind of how I felt yes. doing comedy during the pandemic. Yeah, speakeasy. We're, we're like this. I'm not supposed to be. I remember like on one of the roofs, someone right. took a joint out and they're like, do I have to put it out? And I was like, dude, none of this is legal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We could all die. It was like having a black friend in the 40s. <laughs> Woohoo, we're on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that part of the pandemic. That, that's something we'll tell our kids about. Like, oh, turn off your VR sex worker. I got to talk about this pandemic I was in 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah, the way that you used to, you know, when like your mom would be banging on your door, like dinner, and you're like, I'm studying, but you were jacking off. Yeah. Now it's going to be parents doing that, and the kid's like fucking a sex robot. I'm like, <laughs> come on, just no fucking the sex robot at dinner. Come on. <laughs> right. This is crazy. What about, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you got some gas. My I friend. had a show, I got, we got free food, and it's all what coming do you out. Eat? I got the salmon, so this is gonna be rough. <laughs> oh, <that's> but, gonna, <laughs> oh, we got the white. We got the white wine with the salmon. Yeah. See, I like a white over red because I feel like I, it's it's light. I feel like I'm just drinking water on a crisp day in the sun. But this is a thick wine. This is mm-hmm. a thick white, at least rather like a like yeah. a, This is like a jism white right here. <laughs> this yes, is thick white. It's like a Rosie O'Donnell or a Kirstie Alley. <laughs> <laughs> so you. Uh, 
You you didn't have a good set there, though? Oh, was it rough. I mean, it's one of those giant rooms that keeps going and going. So everybody, of course, sits in the far back because they don't want to be up front. Sure. And then it's very stuffy. It's very rich. They're all members. The furniture is super nice. Members. I know. Brutal. I always think of the scene in Caddyshack when Dangerfield walks in. And it's like, as a kid, that's what you want. Like, you know, he walks into the stuffy country club and he's just zinging everybody. Yeah, he yeah. walks up to that old lady. I bet you were something before electricity. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you. <laughs> I feel like that's most of my life is, is if people were here, they'd be laughing. But you guys hate me. But yeah. like, even at Soho, I'm like, you guys hate me. But if an audience was watching this on TV, I'd be doing well. Exactly. They're like, I, I don't hate you. I'm dead on the inside. Right. And you're like, right, I'm I'm taking it personally. But you are you're miserable. You're hot yes. and you're miserable. And you I can let my guard down enough to perform and bomb for you people, but you can't let your guard down enough to crack a smile. That's a great way to put it. But again, I keep trying to put myself in their, you know, Italian loafers and go, okay, there's six people here, eight people. There's a lot of pressure on them. If they don't laugh, doesn't mean they hate you. So I, I try to give them the benefit, but they hated me. Let's be honest. You went on first. Yeah. That's never easy to crack it open, though. No, Tyler Fisher hosted. He was super positive, great guy, and, and talked to all of them. But you know what's tough is a dark joke with eight people is dead in the water. There were eight people there? Maybe 11. Oh, my it God. It was rough. It's it was a rough. meeting. That's not a fucking show. <laughs> I know, I know. And then the meeting was, say, it was an intervention to quit comedy. <laughs> You should not be doing this. That's tough when you have, yeah, a dark joke for a small crowd. They look at you. This this was my first few years in comedy. They look at you kind of like, we just don't like you. It's not, yes. even the, it's not the material we right. don't like. We don't like you. Yes, we think you're a bad guy because of these jokes. You're like, no, these jokes don't represent me. I just think this is funny. Yeah. I'm not this guy. Like, I opened with a pedo joke, and they were like, what, are you crazy? And I'm like, oh, yeah, the, you guys don't know Can't me. Can't open with that, yeah. I know. Well, but it's just... also like, it's like also, you know who ain't making pedo jokes? Pedos. Yes, good point. So good point. maybe this is a good sign. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Jared Fogle is not doing any pedophile material. <laughs> He's steering clear of that. Uh, Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was talking to Harry before the show, producer Harry, and... uh. You know, he was at, he was asking because we talked last episode what makes a good comedy club. Because we're saying like these are the clubs we like. We left off Acme, by the way. I was thinking oh, Minneapolis, great club, good call, good call. But you know, and I'm sure we left off a million. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's something about like low ceilings. Everything that's <laughs> everything that makes COVID bad. Is good for comedy. It's good for comedy. So true. People Packed on top room. of each other. Yeah, yeah. Hot, dingy room, smoky, low ceiling. Yeah, yeah. It's all horrible. It's all bad for Corona. Yeah. Great for comedy. But speakeasies, that seemed like fun. You know, that's the invention, of, or not the invention, but that's what led to Mexico, like border towns, because they'd hop the border just for a cocktail. Damn. Yeah, that's how it all started. They hopped the border for a drink. That's how bad people wanted a drink because there wasn't blow yet and stuff like that. You know, there wasn't like Percocet back then. So they had to get creative and all they had was booze. That was the only way to cut the edge. It's funny that booze is legal because you see like how dangerous it is. Like, I know. I feel like we drink, but I feel like we drink pretty responsibly. Yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we took a few road bumps to get there. I remember us at industry parties back when we were, <laughs> when we were young <laughs> comics and there was an open bar and it was like, it was just us like guzzling shots. Oh, yeah. And me walking up to someone like, this is you. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I'm the president of NBC. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's Oops. so true. Oh, man. We didn't yeah. realize we were burning some bridges. No. Oh, no. But we were 24 or 26, whatever it was. And also, yeah. back then, there was no thought of mixing alcohol. It was just like, oh, I'll take a beer. I'll take a tequila. I'll take a red wine. Yeah. I'll take a Jaeger. Whatever it was, you just took it. And uh, the goal was like, okay, the bar's going to close. I got to black out before then. <laughs> we were not mature. It, and I think I don't want to ever become an alcoholic because I don't want to ever have to quit. Oh, yeah. I like it too much to abuse it. Yeah. I mean, we Same. abuse it probably slightly. Sure. Well, it's like a, a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional. Yes. Now. <laughs> now um, yeah, no, you're right. We abuse it a little, but we know where, it's almost like comedy. We know where the line is. We cross it a little with alcohol, and then we, we bring it back. And just like in comedy, in 10 years, people are going to be like, and you did what? <laughs> That's true. Yes. 
Thank God there's not documentation of my college and high school years drinking. Oh, my God. I think oh, says everybody. The I, yakking I mean, on myself, all that shit. I remember doing prom shows completely just shithouse wasted. Yeah. And, like, guess what? It was your, like, Caroline's Comedy Club. Yeah. Yeah. It would be you'd go on at like three thirty in the morning. They'd be shit house wasted. And you're like, what am I? I'm getting paid twenty five bucks. What am I not gonna get hammered? Exactly. I gotta get my money somehow, and they're gonna hate me anyway. So I might as well have fun. Sold out room, and they're paying us twenty five bucks to get home at six a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there were some great nights. There were some great nights. It would be great when we didn't know we'd be there, and you'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah. You're an idiot too. <laughs> we both need a gig. Yeah, and but it was just fun because it was a real knife fight. That was a real lesson in like hey you don't just tell your jokes you got to be on your feet in the moment zinging and zanging with these you know horny 18 year old kids with a crust dash and a boner you had to really riff and 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 go off the 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 script you start bombing you're like all right who's the nerd they all start cheering you're like all right let me throw someone else under the bus here oh yeah this guy's a virgin (laughs) he just started jerking off he likes her but she's into this guy yeah that was always fun they'd be like oh my god he knows us (laughs) Yeah, those gigs were hell. Those were awful when you start a show at 5 p.m. Because you're like on like Linda Smith's show. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, all right, well, I'm starting at 5 p.m. And my last spot is at 3.45 a.m. <laughs> this is going to be a weird night. Yeah, and you're like, I better have a beer now. <laughs> and then you have another beer throughout every show until the 3.30 you, one. You show up to Caroline's at like 3.30 in the morning without a shirt on. Like, hey, <laughs> you sure you're on tonight? You're like, I'm on. And then Burt Kreischer's like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, those were wild times. And... No real, I mean, we didn't think about consequences. It was a fun way to live. There were consequences, but we didn't think about them. That's true. Now I'm always in my head, like, I guess because we're older. Yeah, and also you can't, you're that guy in your 20s, that's all right, but you're that guy in your 30s. It's, you're, there's, you're not a work in progress anymore. Right. You're, you're the work. Right, right. That's so true. I did a video shoot, and it was a pretty big shoot with a guy, I'm not going to say who it is, but we know him well. And we went, we did a lunch break and they're like, go wherever you want for lunch in the city and then come back in like an hour. And he put down like four beers at lunch. Wow. And he came back and he was a little loosey goosey. And they were like, this is not cute anymore. Like this, we should fire you. You're, you're gross. You're pathetic. And he was like, oh shit. He thought he was fun. Richard Belzer. <laughs> yeah, it was low in order. <laughs> that was the shoot. But yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was an eye opener for me. Yeah, that's a problem where you just, you got to have a handle on it because yeah. it's so easy not to. That's the thing is like, it would be so easy to become an alcoholic for us because we drink for free at every club. Yep. It, you get bored. There's so much downtime. Totally. I mean, that's the thing too. You get off stage and you feel that energy from the crowd. Like say that you crush, you get off stage, you're like, I need a drink. I need, I can't just like let that feeling go. I need yeah. something. Or you bomb and you're like, oof, I got to get rid of that feel. No matter what, you're like, I need a drink. That's so true. Yeah. I never thought of it like that. It's the cure all. It's a great drug. Great drug. It it kind of just adapts to you. Whatever you need, it goes with it. You want to keep partying? It's a great night. You drink. If you have a horrible night, you drink. Back in the day, meth was that? (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Yeah. Damn, meth does yeah. meth does not look fun. If it look, the thing is, alcohol can be awful, and mm-hmm. you can look awful, but can also look fun. That's true. Meth and never looks fun. Don Draper had a scotch. Kings have these chalices with wine in it, so they're still successful people. <laughs> you know, they crack a bottle of champagne when they sell a big thing at Ford or whatever. You know, so there's booze still in successful places, but there's no meth in like you know the White House or or whatever. That's a good point. I know Don Draper was a miserable guy, but he looked like he was having a good time. He had a, uh, there was some good times peppered in, but. He was banging so many hot women. They're like, yeah. I know you're unhappy, but this is like high, sh- this is top shelf misery. Yes, yes. It's this like, is the Belvedere of right. like sadness here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like you say, the, the, the party from the man. You know, you got to separate them. And we saw his man, but we also saw the party. Yeah, Breaking Bad, it's like, I know they were just selling meth, but even just like that, just being around it, like, who'd you rather be, Don Draper or Jesse Pinkman? Come on. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt. No. Gotta go Draper all day. Pinkman, yeah. You're not, not a fan? Well, he was a good guy, but uh, just a sad life when the girlfriend OD'd and just the the, the giant hoodies and the, the, the outfits. Yeah, I don't know. She was hot, dude. She was hot. That was tough to see her go. I know. Damn. Are you a big Breaking Bad guy? Oh, yeah. 
Seen it many times. Yeah. I always say I think that changed TV. That was so good. It was like, I didn't know TV could be this good. You know who might have been, I don't think he's talked about enough as being such a great actor on that show is the guy who plays Gus. Gus. The, oh, the, drug, the chicken guy. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's amazing. That guy's amazing. incredible. That guy's amazing, yeah. Odin Kirk is great. The yes. guy Mike is great. But everyone talks about Odin Kirk. Yeah. And, and he's a fucking action star now. It's I like, know. Good for him. But that guy Mike is great. The the bald guy who's like the the right man right hand man of Odin Kirk. Oh He's yeah, like Erman Trout. Yeah, yeah, that guy's awesome. Yeah, love that show from Beverly Hills Cop. Is he? He's the goon in Beverly Hills Cop. Wow. He's the guy who kills Eddie Murphy's friend in the beginning, and he and he's the guy Eddie Murphy. Like, he looks the same. He looks like a tough guy. Even yeah. Then. Yeah, yeah. That guy's cool. That 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 guy used to be on TV a lot more. That just like quiet tough guy, kind of fix it all, like the wolf from. Uh, from uh, Pulp Fiction, the guy who just came in and handled shit. Lots of cream, lots of sugar. <laughs> Dead end word storage. <laughs> yeah, that scene, holy shit. Oh, uh, when I was done with it, didn't look like a fucking tampon. <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. Can I give you a peeve that hit me today? Please, hard? please, right. give me a peeve. So I'm in the. I went to a different sandwich place today. I like, I need a sandwich during the day. I'm a big sandwich guy. It's yeah. funny. I was talking to someone the other day, and she goes, I "Never got into sandwiches." I was like. You never gotten a sandwich? It's the most basic thing. Yeah. It's like saying I fucking hate America. <laughs> I've never right. gotten to sandwiches. I never gotten to movies and ice cream. <laughs> hate dogs. TV, not for me. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you know. No. Uh, yeah, she. but anyway, I go, and there's a guy. He's not on speakerphone, but he's the loud guy, in, and it's a small place. Mm. So he's literally buzzing in my ear. Yes. On the loud call, and he's... It's never a dude having a thoughtful conversation on these calls because they're an idiot. They're lacking awareness. So right. They're an asshole. So what they're saying is never what I have to. I'm forced to listen to is never something that is interesting in any way. Yes. He, yes. I literally hear him keep going. I'm different from other people. I invest in the man. Oh. He kept saying that. Oh man, <laughs> what a cheese dick. I, I want to be like I. I invested in a machete just now. You piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I invest. I would be so embarrassed to say that out loud, let alone yell it in a store. He yelled it, Woo. and I. And it was like the point that I was ordering my sandwich, and I couldn't. She was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Oh, this." I, I was so close to snapping. I yeah. held it. I was kind of like in my head, like, "Be calm. This is wow. his shit." I was like, ooh, ooh, I hate. I was. I gave him dirty looks. Oh, good, good. The dirty look is underrated. I love a dirty look. Yeah, I get a dirty look. It it, it stones me for like a week. I just I'm in the shower. Like, oh, that was a bad look. <laughs> I gotta change my shit. But no, good. That guy stinks. I hate that guy. I also hate the guy who talks on the phone like this. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like all right. Just put it to your ear like a human being. Who do you think you are? How about how about the beep person? I'm so glad we did away with flip phones for the people that. That would love to hang up on you by going just going. <laughs> they would just snap it. <laughs> they wouldn't so even true. say bye. They would just do. I'm like, oh, you're not Ari Gold, motherfucker. Right, All right. right. Yeah. Or if they say Sam out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We get it, Seacrest. Or anyone who goes, anyone who has a thing. Speak. <laughs> ah, yeah, that guy's the word. This is all very L.A. I picture the Bluetooth. You know. Yeah, my dad, and this this sums up my dad in one moment, one action is he doesn't say bye on the phone. He just hangs up. I fucking hate that. And you're like, hey, dad, like, I'm your son. Tell me bye. You know, I don't know. I'm still going. I'm still making up bullshit conversation because I think you're there. And then you just hear like, do, do, do. You're like, oh, geez, dad's gone. That is so weird. I know. It's, it's so it's so little intimacy. What does he just say, okay, and hangs not, up? Not even okay. He's like, well, what time am I picking you up? I'm like, oh, pick. Uh, can you pick me up at five? He's like, yeah, I can make five work. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And he's already gone. Damn. Yeah, because he's just like information. It's not mean, but he's just like, I got the info. I'm I'm good. My biological dad did that, but without the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that's interesting, man. That's that's. I had a friend who did that to it, and it drove me nuts. The the friend who he wouldn't even say bye. What he would just do is, oh no, he wouldn't say I gotta go. He would just go, okay, bye. He wouldn't say I gotta go. Right. He would just give you the hard bye. I'm like, you gotta work to the bye. Work to the bye. Say all right. Uh, uh, but it, I'll tell you though, it also bothers me. Well, I'm keeping you. Let's just say I gotta go. Yes, I I'll hate say, that. I'm, well, I'm, I don't want to take a bit. Well, I know I'm. Yes. Uh, I'm, ke I'm keeping you. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go. How about how about I choose when I go? You don't get to decide my schedule for me. Okay. Totally, totally with you. So with you. Um, uh, how about this one with the phone? If we're on the phone. Jeffrey Joseph had the funniest joke. I loved it. I wish I had wrote it. I miss it. that guy. I love that. I saw him in Vancouver last year. He's oh, a, really? Yeah, he lives there now. And uh, 
Wow, he actually went to Canada. He's yeah. one of the few people who said, I'm going to Canada. He went. <laughs> if Trump wins, I'm going to Canada. Yeah, he went. Yeah. He went. Respect. Good for him. Yeah. Vancouver's great. Oh, we just, yeah, we just did a whole. He's getting a lot of acting work, too. He's a great actor. He's on The Sopranos. That's right. Yeah, he's in a ton of shit. He's got a great resume. He's in uh, Scrooged. Wow. He's in the scene in The Sopranos where they handcuff Johnny Sack. That's right, at the Quinceanera or whatever that was. Yeah. The wedding, yeah. Like, you I'm are farting sorry. like crazy. This is the salmon is. You are. I, I'm bummed that you haven't given Rick and Morty more of a shot because you are. You are Rick in some ways. Is he a farter? He farts. He belches, but he's also really smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. So wait, Jeffrey Joseph. He has this great bit about. You always see the guy in New York on the sidewalk, like, "Fuck that guy." I'm gonna blah 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 blah. But you never hear. You never see the guy in New York on the phone going, "Uh huh." <laughs> is that right? <laughs> you never hear that guy. It's always the guy yelling, and it's so true. Because every time I walk by a guy going, motherfucker, I'm going to come over there. And you're like, I think of his bit, it's which so, is a sign of a good It bit. is funny when you see an angry person on the phone in New York. When you see someone melting down, yes. it does give you, it's almost like seeing like, it's almost like seeing someone else get pulled over by the cops. And something where you're like, all right, better them than me. It's weird. Yes. Like you ever see someone else step in shit and you're yes. like, I'm not happy you stepped in shit, but I'm glad that you sacrificed yourself right. for the block in a yeah. way. You <laughs> yeah, know? Totally. I mean, that's the whole premise of America's Funniest Home Videos. Like that guy fell off the ladder. He got kicked by a pony. You know, uh, the fat guy fell asleep uh, at the birthday and went through the cake. For sure. And, and like that guy, I, I saw a guy, though, snap on the phone the other day. He's just like a little Jewish guy, a little Jewish old man. He goes, you fucking asshole, you listen to me. And I was like, oh, that just like made my day. <laughs> that energy just made me happy. You uh, piece of shit. I love it. And it's funny because we talk about how we hate the guy yelling on the phone, but that guy, we don't mind. He's doing it out in the open. So he's going to be... If it's in an enclosed space, right. you're a fucking monster. That's a good Who point. Who raised you? I don't get that thought process because... I used to work out at the rec center. It's I, lo I love the rec center. I love the rec center. It's the, it's the best kept secret in the city, and we, we shouldn't even be plugging it. You're right. I was just talking Don't about the Don't go to the rec day. center. Don't. I shouldn't have said the price. But it, you're right. It's the best kept secret. Me and Salakis went to the tennis courts the other day. It's beautiful. It's right on Are the you river. Good at tennis? No, we just went for a shoot. But uh, I was like, why don't I come here? I should start playing tennis. We should play tennis like in fucking Annie Hall or something. I would love that. I'm terrible, though. I'm terrible, too. So it'll be perfect. But I'd love to get good at it. Yeah, hell yeah. And it's good exercise. And it's right. You don't have to run around too much. It's perfect. Dude, racquetball, too. That's, oh, that's where it's at. We're not successful enough for racquetball. No, ball. but I'd like to get there. That's like Gordon it looks Gecko. Fun. It I, does. In college, they, they had it in the gym so i got uh -huh. to go when i was in new orleans so like we go play and, and it was like this is so fun oh the riley oh, center i only played a couple times though, yeah but it was yeah. great it is we got we got to find a way dude we got it that's a good idea we'll do a video there let's do a video <laughs> are you good at it no i haven't played Me in neither. 20 years but i love the ee, 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 ee. i love that and you get the the ball sound it, it's very tense because you're in that box i feel like you feel like we're, we're gonna have like matthew mcconaughey like energy if we get to do it <laughs> that's true Oh, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Shit. Oh, oh, uh, the rec center. You know, you work out at the rec center. I worked out in the village. So it was a mixed bag of old white people and like a random Colombian guy and then like a crazy, like beaked up Logan Paul kind of guy. Yeah. And this Logan Paul guy would blare uh, like Van Halen and whatnot. <laughs> and then this Dominican guy would blare salsa. And Damn. we all hated both of them, but they'd be there on different days. And then one day they showed up together and both blared their music. So it was like, you know, Eddie Van Halen versus uh, Merengue or whatever the hell. And they were like, what are you doing? He was like, what are you doing? And it was like the highlight of my life because I'm like, you're both asshole assholes. You're both assholes. And now you get to see it. And how did it end? Uh, one guy was like stormed off and left and the other guy kept his music and in his mind he's like oh I guess I won I beat the bad guy I'm like you're the bad guy you just can't tell that's oh that's the best you like when the two like it's almost like seeing yourself in a bizarro mirror yes yes where you're like oh this guy's an asshole and then you're like I'm an asshole right I, I wish they, they came to that they didn't see that though no they're too far gone as assholes the rude it's like the rude person on the on the plane who's like got a they've got an important business call and you're just like, all right, dude, you're not that special. Right, right. Imagine if you could get cell phone service on flights. It would be Oh, good endless, point, dude. Good point. Because you sometimes you're on a on a you're on Amtrak and you're like, Oh, I fucked up, I didn't send the quiet car. And there's just that dude just on the business call. And it's I like, know. You're not that fucking important. Yeah. Or and just 
attempt. Just the attempt to be like, hang on, man, I'm on the train. I got to talk a little lower. That, that's all I need. The low, yeah. If you even said that, I'll fucking, so much respect. So much respect. That goes a long way. But it's the idea, like, I, it's my train. No one else is on it. I do what I want. That's what no, kills I got, me. No one near me is important. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. What do you, what do you got? That's what it is. The worst seat. You're a bigger guy. Sometimes I'll give the dirty look and they're like, some pussy gave me a dirty look. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> that happened to you? Yeah, I've had that before. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Which now, now I'm like, I wish I never gave the look because now I'm even more embarrassed. Nah, you got to give the look. Yeah, I guess so. It's important to give a They should at least know. Get they enough know. hints. You're, 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 you're cracking the armor just a little bit. One day, hopefully, it'll break. But Yeah, good point. Hopefully, well, what about the guy who plays the loud casino game on the bus? Bing, 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 bing. bing. He's, he's, you know, you hear the, the coins. It's your fault for being machine. on the bus. <laughs> I guess so. The That's... bus is anybody's game. I, I train and plane, you got to fucking. Right. But when you're on the bus, it's like, yeah, you're. Subway, Subway's another one where it's like, I can go on for days about the shit. Like, first off, the toenail clippers on the subway. Oof. I hope I'm not overstating. I think deserve the death penalty. And yes. I'm, I think, and I don't, I'm not talking about a lethal injection. I think they should be beheaded like ISIS. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and then, and then I think we should start with the toes and then cut their head off. Yeah. yeah. So then here's the other thing. The toenail clippers, the hot meal guy. Ooh. Don't bring your fucking halal on an enclosed space. I don't want to smell your food. It's yeah. rude. Good point. Good point. Here, here. I love how we said that before the jerking off. Yes. <laughs> the jerking off, of, I can handle that. because it's. I a, understand that. Yeah, but the hot food, what are you, crazy? <laughs> the hot food is, I, I the, at least there's no smell to jerking off. Ah, depends yeah, on could, the, could the, the season. On the shower situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. But, All right. No, the jerking off is worse, but only a little. Yeah, I'll tell you a fun story. My parents were in town, which is always a nightmare. But they were in town, and my I met my parents for dinner at this nice restaurant, and my mom was late, and she uh, she finally showed up, and she's like, "Sorry, I'm late." There was a guy masturbating uh, on the car, staring at me in the in the in the subway car, and I was like, "What? Oh my gosh!" Because you just picture your poor mom and this guy mm. with a huge dong, like looking at her, and I was like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" And I felt violated and weird, and she was like, "Yeah, yeah, I just changed cars," and I'm like. Yeah. Why are you so fun? You know, every other <laughs> girl's like, a guy looked at me and kissed me on the cheek, and I wanted to call the police. And I'm like, my mom's getting jerked <laughs> off on, and she like didn't even think about it. Maybe she took the compliment. And she kept moving. That's, Good point. That's how you do it. It is a compliment, and she's no it's surprise an- <laughs> either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's got short hair, Crocs, red red frame Coke bottle glasses. There's a, there's a fetish for everything. My ah, friends. good point. Good point. Yeah, he had a maybe had a milf thing. Maybe the thing is like I like women who look like. They're into arts and crafts. Let me, <laughs> she let me, does. <laughs> she looks like an art teacher who who makes like um, what do you call those? Like potholders. <laughs> a vase. Yeah. Well, you know those like cute yarn potholders that can hold a pot. Uh, I don't know. She's very. She's very uh, into that shit. Like knickknacks. It is. I mean, you just got to move the. You got to move. That's all you got to. I mean, it's a lot. You see a lot of people more now than ever. Is the people who are just losing their shit in public? Yeah, like this city broke people before the pandemic. That's true. That's true. I wonder. And this is my dumb theory. And feel free to kick me in the balls here. Mm-hmm. But I think we're all very. Our world is very. Um, what's the word? Not meticulated. Uh, uh, oh, ca- 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 calculated. No, caricatured. What's the uh, come on, Sam? Thank you. Our world is very uh, curated. Okay. Thank you. You know, you got your profile, you got your Twitter page, you got your Grubhub coming with your order. I said gluten free, no toast. You know, it's all you, you, you. It's your and then, world. Then you go out into the the real world, and it's jerking off. It's toenail clipping. It's uh, the the mariachi band, and I think people snap a little. For sure, it's you have it your way yes. all the time, more than ever. The as you said, the world it's your you've curated. This is your own little world, like, right? Everything is even an algorithm is based for your satisfaction. Great, great way, great. Everything example. is for you, you know. Yes. If Amazon, if you like this, you might also exactly. like this. Exactly. That doesn't happen on the subway. If you like peace and quiet, you might also like this guy showing you his butthole. Right. No, it's not how <laughs> right. it goes. It's you can't control the world, and that even lack dating of, apps, even dating apps. Yeah, it's but all that, for you. But that lack of control makes people crazy. I think. 
Yes, for sure. But also, no one should have to see a guy jerking his dick wow. off on a train. But I mean, that's true. But it could be a different thing. It could be the the Showtime, Showtime, Showtime guys, and and that's the beauty of life is it's it's a it's a double edged sword. Like there's horrible things, but there's also I mean, you take an Amish guy and he's going to see the mariachi band on the train and be like, oh my god, this is the best entertainment I've ever seen, and it's free. What? <laughs> then he sees a Blackberry and he goes, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you might be Amish. You're still using a Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know, it's like uh it is madness when you get in the subway, you're like, this is it crazy. Is. I kind of like that it's still a mess a little bit. That's what I'm saying. I think it's still a good thing. You need it. It it, it levels everybody. Like you get a celebrity on that subway and he's just as down as you or down as anybody else. It's fun when you see a celebrity on there. Yeah. Now, who give me a good one you've seen. I saw Seth Meyers on there when he was doing Weekend Update, like before the show, before this the uh the late show. So that was kind of cool. Like, wow, this is like a New York guy riding the For subway sure. and he's the weekend update anchor when SNL was like still SNL. <laughs> now we just know everybody on SNL and we know half the writer, so it's it doesn't feel special. Yeah. I saw David Hyde Pierce like a few Ooh, years ago. Frazier. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Very uh, you know, very uh, incognito. He's got his old glasses, or his uh, hat down, glasses. But yeah, it was mm, him. That's cool. Yeah, I uh, smoked a cigar on the subway with Bill Burr once. What? Yeah, it was crazy. MP? We got uh, not really. I mean, it was two in the morning. There was seven guys on it, but we just tucked in the corner. We were smoking cigars after a show. Amazing night. We got drunk at some Mexican restaurant. Drank tequila all night. Was this the West Side? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, that. that I remember taco this place. night when you told me about it. Yeah, yeah. Best night of my life. You know, one of them. And then we we he got outside. He's like, "Here you go." And I was like, "Oh my god, we're smoking cigars. We're talking, talking shit." And then he's like, "Ah, I got to get back to my hotel. I didn't know it was this late." And I was like, "Well, I'm going that way too." And he goes, "Oh, let's get the train." So we're smoking in the subway. We're so drunk that we didn't even think about it, and we just got on the train. Damn. And we're just smoking in the train, but it was so late, nobody cared. So you're like, part of me was like, man, you're. 52 or what has he got to be 50 years 50 old Fifty maybe i don't know 49 yeah so if you live like this now i can't imagine how you lived in the in the when you were 30 it's kind of fun to think about he's a i he, love it it's cool that he's such a good guy because mm -hmm. he must know that we look up to him oh yeah i wrote out the gayest longest sappiest uh message after because you know you're drunk so you're like opening up I was like, you don't know what you mean to me. Yeah, <laughs> you changed my life. I I'll love suck your comedy. Your dick. I love you. <laughs> you want me to come over right now? I'll do it. <laughs> and he wrote like, thanks. <laughs> but no, he was nice. He was I love nice. you, K. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was yeah. cool. He was he was very uh, generous as well, and all that. And, he's, uh, he's the coolest. See, that's what people don't get. Like a lot of these darker guys tend to be some of the darker on stage. Tend to be like the nicest people in real life. Yeah, I think that's where they get it out. Exactly. There's this Gustave Flaubert quote. I, I think I said it on the podcast before. It says, be violent in your work so you can be ordinary in your life. I think about that a lot. Love it. Get it out there. Yeah. And then be a decent human. Exactly, exactly. You know, it, it's it's like Tarantino has these people getting their heads cut off and, you know, psycho scenes and blood and... He seems like a decent guy. <laughs> I was going to say, he seems like he probably has a bunch of Thai hookers in his yeah. hotel every night. <laughs> yeah. But it's weird with comedy. I feel like we we take it on the, the chest more. Yeah. It's a weird way to put it. But we take it on the chin more because we're just that <laughs> it was one guy. a crazy guy. night with Burr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who am I? Odell Beckham? <laughs> but give that a Damn. goog. You don't get a lot of sports. I don't get a lot of sports references like that out of you. Well, if you get shit on your chest, uh, I'm going to remember you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the touchdowns of the Heismans. Man, he, what a weird guy to lose from. He was so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that chest thing was really, uh, that it's was a, a, it's a weird rumor to get. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't deny it, but pretty fucked up. Uh, this that. wine's hitting me nice. I love it. I'm bringing I'm bringing another bottle next week. Can we do it back to back wine weeks, or is that weird? I don't know. I think we got to mix it up. All right, we'll mix it up. But I'm down. I just like getting wine drunk. Pirouettes. Yeah, this is great shit. Tutti frutti. Weird name. Yeah. I don't feel like a hard edged guy drinking it, but I don't give a fuck. No, no. I don't give a shit if you're judging me in those YouTube comments, which Mark will certainly read. <laughs> That's true. And by the way, I read all the new ones. It's all about me reading the comments. Really? I know you're reading this, Dickless. <laughs> Get a life, <laughs> and I would like it. I don't mind a ball busting in the comments. I'll take it, you know, as long as it's not 
as long as it's from a good place. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I crack up. I'll see. I'll see him on Twitter more than than that, obviously, and like or Instagram, and and uh, they make me laugh sometimes when they shit on me. Oh yeah. As long as I can tell when it's coming from a nice. Pl- That's what ball busting is. Like yes. a lot of people don't know what ball busting is. It's. You you need to tell that the person's kidding, right? Otherwise, right. you're just saying something shitty to another person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and there's a a difference between meanness and joke. If you just go like "you suck" or "you're bad" or "I hate you," that's not ball busting. Yeah. That's just being mean. Ball busting is some kind of zing or a twist. It's gotta be. It's gotta be from the heart. I was at the cellar the other night with uh, with Salacuse, our boy. We're filming something, and you know we we roll up with Dom also. The other mm. two did the drones on my last special, the roof special. Oh yeah, and we show up, and Joe DeRosa sees us, immediately goes, "What is this for your sidewalk special?" And they, <laughs> if I, it made we all laugh pretty hard. I'm like, "That's how you ball bust." That's great. That's that's like you're shitting on me, and there's truth to it, but it's it's not fucking just straight up cruel. That's how, yes. That's how friends ball bust. I also here's another thing I hate. Here's a here's a peeve. Oh, bl- lay it ball on Ball busting when people are just louder than you. Oh, so true. You didn't win because you talked over me, motherfucker. Yes, yeah, so true. I saw a thing on the internet. I'm not gonna say who it was, but this young guy was getting the best of this vet comedian, and the vet just got louder. And I'm like, this guy is actually funnier than you. You just know that, and so you're trying to drown him out. Damn. Yeah, it was ugly. That's almost like. In a wrestling match where, like, they've got you beat and you distract the ref and you just, like, hit him with a chair or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you stab them and no one's looking. <laughs> the yeah. end of Gladiator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Hold on. Let me let me give you my peeve. Oh, boy. This is a girlfriend thing and uh, drives me nuts. <laughs> I feel like if we, if we tracked all your peeves, they all go back to... <laughs> well, she's a cute younger lady mm-hmm. so i feel like you know the world has been her oyster a little bit so mm-hmm. you know i get annoyed with how uh you know roses and fairy dust everything is because i might have paired a mortgage but either way this is the dumbest thing but it drives me crazy i hate a lot of questions because i hate saying i don't know i feel guilty saying i don't know so the more questions you ask that i don't know the answer to i feel shittier by saying i don't know give me an example you know just like uh Hey, what was the name of the, what's the capital of Turkey? And I'm like, uh, and I'll look it up because I don't want to say I don't know. I feel like too many people give you an I don't know, and it's it's just like kind of a throwaway. Like, hey, uh, what, what color is your shirt? I don't know. And I don't want to be that guy. So I want to be nice and try to help and say something, but. It's weird when people ask anything when Google exists. Well, that, well that's, that's true too. But she'll ask me questions that there's no way I can know the answer to. And I'm like, what are you doing? This is how would I know this? What is this like fucking pop quiz Jeopardy? Nah, it's and it's not malicious. Here's an example: a package will come for her, and I'll br- oh like oh there's a package for the gal. I'll bring it up to her, you know, see see what it is, you know. And I walk in and I go, hey, you got a package? She goes, what is it? <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's a package, <laughs> but it's that shit all the time. What is it? What is it? I'm like, I don't know. It's a box. It's a cardboard box with your name on it. You open it. But I feel, and it's, I just go, I don't know, you open it. The, the other day, our cat knocked over something in the other room and was like, Psh, and she was like, what was that? I don't know, it's in the other room. Like, how can I know that? We both are in the same boat here. We gotta go look at it. I don't, what was that? Let me use my x-ray vision yes, real quick. exactly, I'll tell exactly. You. So now I'm the guy going, I don't know. And it's she's so like, funny that you have a cat. You're I so, know. I, you so don't strike me as a cat guy. Not a cat, I grew up with cats, but uh, you gotta see me at four in the morning. I'm making love to this thing, I love it. I, I'm in my underwear, squeezing it and rubbing it, and the cat's got one leg up and I'm in the gut, it's great. But all the other part sucks, you know, the shitting and the litter. Does, does the cat claw up your furniture? Not at all. We got lucky. It's like a great cat. It's never hissed. It's never clawed. It's never bitten. Is it declawed? No. Just a just a house cat that's real chill and laid back. Damn. See, if I had if I had someone who stayed home and took care, like, but what do you do when she goes on the road with you? Uh, we have a her friend comes by and they're all like broke comics, so they're like, we get to stay in the village for a weekend. Hell yeah. Nice. And they just take care of the cat. Are you worried that they're banging in your bed, though? I I gave one of them the business. Like, you better not be fucking any disgusting open micers in here. I don't even want any open micers in my home. And she was like, okay, okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, hey, I got to be honest about this. Yeah, I just think banging in the bed. It's like, that's your bed. That's where you sleep. Even if you change the sheets, there's... I don't like it. I don't even like them sleeping there, to be honest. So 
It's already a push. So I was. But you get the the cat is not, it's a nice touch. You get a little. You get a little. It's a nice touch. Companionship late at night. Exactly. I would love. I would love a pet. I love in the long goodbye. Elliot Gould's got that little cat. Yes, it's nice. It's fun. A cat. Cats are. They get so people. Oh, you're a cat guy. Cats are cool because to me, usually, I'm not saying they're better than dogs, but they're more. They're low maintenance. Dogs. That's are like, what it is. Dogs are like walk me twice a day. Where yes. cats are like. I'll shit in this box, do your thing. Right. I like that. I like that I can kind of go away. Cats are like cool chicks where like you can just text like, you up? That's exactly that's And a dogs are thing. like, you better fucking commit. Yeah. Why aren't you texting me? Why aren't you texting me? You don't get those 30 texts and you're like, Jesus what are Christ. We? <laughs> what are we? Exactly. I mean, a cat's cool and it doesn't jump on you when you walk in like a dog does and you're like, all right, all right, take it easy. It's nice that you're happy to see me, but. Give it a second. I realize why I have a lot of relationship problems now that I like cats. Yeah, yeah. You got to earn it with a cat. Cats push you away the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That could be a bit. <laughs> but yeah, cats, great. Low energy, low key. Just sits, wants to look out the window, sits on the sill and, and uh, watches TV with you. There's no, they're, no... they're great animals. Great animals. And there's so much hate for a cat. I, I don't get it. I think it just became hip to hate a cat. I think it did. Yeah, it was like Dane Cook. You know, it just became cool to hate them. But the cat's great. Everybody likes it. It's nice. It doesn't bother. I do podcasts at my house, and the cat just sits there and listens to us. Hard to make laugh, though. Can't get the cat to laugh. But I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah, great cat. I, you don't want to be a cat lady. That's yeah. the problem. What is a cat man better? I think if you're just alone with a cat, you get that rap. I don't think it's it's gender specific, really. Cat lady gets the shit, but it's like, if you have multiple That's cats. That's what it is, the multiple. Yeah, if you, yeah. Have mul if, you have, if you just have one cat, I mean, shit, who cares? It's great, If you yeah. have multiple pets, that's tough. Nah, cats are cool. It's like living with a pill head. You know, they just hang loose. They sleep a lot. They don't talk. It's great. It's like Stephen Wright in, uh, <laughs> that, in Half Baked. I was just going to say that. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> wow, that are you really? went to the same place. Wow. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. I was this close. That's great. Yeah. Cats are fun. He's it's great in that movie. Bad rep. You know what it is? It's insecurity because people, the dog runs up and licks your face. It's humping your leg. It's going nuts. The cat, people are like, nothing. And you're like, hey, how about you make it like you? You know? So, Earn it. Yeah. I like it. No, I'm, I'm into it. I We're going to get, I know, I know we're going to get shit on this one. I know. But I like dogs too. I'm just saying cats get unnecessary hate. Yes. That's all I'm saying. And I feel like in Manhattan, I don't want to abuse a dog by keeping it in a tiny apartment for 24 hours a day or, or, or whatever. I was in college. I lived with two guys, I remember, and one of them had a dog that he rescued from a, you know, it was a rescue dog. And the dog was abused. Mm. And I'll say this, like, it was sad. It was skittish. But you never had to tell that dog anything twice. It was kind of Oh, nice. really? Oh, yeah. You fucking were like, don't do that. It was like, ah. And I'm like. This dog listens. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, you do feel bad. You're like, fuck, abuse animals. Like, who the fuck does that? Yeah, that's crazy. Who who hits an animal? I've seen it in real time, and you're like, this guy. It's like being mean to the waiter, where you're like, ah, you're off. It's I want to fucking fight a dude. Who, I know, and I can't even fight, but I want to get in there. Yeah, it's not good. It's it's like hitting a kid or a baby. Yeah, yeah, not a fan. Or those. Remember when I was growing up, they always said the guy would blow weed on the dog or pour beer in his bowl. And Don't you're like, make Come the on. fucking dog your drug buddy. Exactly. Get a fucking real drug buddy. Yes, there's a lot of guys out there who want to do drugs. Don't make the dog do it. It's so easy to find a guy to give weed to. Yeah, yeah, men love weed. What? Uh, do you have any recs or no? I do, but I'm scared to say it because Why? I feel like they should sponsor us and maybe give us money, so I don't want to give them a free plug. All right, so let's not give it to them. All right, all right. Good, good okay. idea. We'll okay. talk about it after. I, I have one, too, that I think should be plugging us, uh -huh. and I don't want to give it to them. Uh, I wonder if we have the same thing. Oh, I we'll, doubt it. We'll find out Mine's after. pretty obscure. All right. Let me give you one more peeve with the girlfriend please, and I'll leave it please. alone. I love it. All right, all I'm right. I'm like a fly on the wall here. <laughs> well, you've had many ladies in your day, so you know you know what I'm going through here, but this is a gal thing, so all you ladies listening, get your shit together with this one. She, lo I don't know if I've said this on the pod. I hope not. But she loves the whole. Oh, you're you're leaving. I'll leave with you. And you're like, okay. You know, I got a five thirty appointment at the doctor, so I'm leaving at five. I planned it all out. You know, I got my whole day. And she's like, oh, 
you're leaving? I'm like, yeah, I'm walking out. It's 4.59. I'm walking out the house. She's like, I'll go with you. I'll go, I got to go get a, uh, some batteries or whatever it is. Run an errand. I'm like, all right. But then that means do her makeup, pop in the shower, Ooh. do the hair, get your shoes. Where? Where's my good shoes? Where's my heels? I'm like, I don't know. And now it's 5.15, and I'm on the couch watching uh, Matlock waiting for her to you know get it together while we leave because we had to leave together. This happened in 1992? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I, I'm so with you on this one. I, the, the, the leaving is the leaving now. I'll leave with you is we're leaving now. Now. You got to get up and leave. Man, it's also like, and I'm not even blowing you, Emin, with, with this shit, but like, you look great. Yeah. Enough, you don't need to take 30 minutes on makeup. You look no. fine, honestly. Totally. And uh, it, it, yeah, I, I it drives me insane. I remember I had a girlfriend once and we had, Laker, I might have said this on the podcast, we'd get drunk every week on this, but I had, yeah. a, uh, I had a girlfriend and we had Lakers tickets, mm. like good seats. You did, tell, you did tell you this. Yeah. One. The whole point is, she took forever to get ready. We get there in the late second quarter, and I'm like, oh. give me a fucking break. I've told this for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's like, brutal. Don't do this with fucking Kobe's farewell season on the line Ooh, here, for fuck's sake. Oh, this is why the copter went down. I mean, it's things like <laughs> that's this. Not, that's not true. That's not That's true. not confirmed. But I'm just saying, like, time is a factor. Now I sound like the wolf again from Pulp Fiction. Time is a factor. We have to be Kurt. If I'm Kurt with you, it's because time is a factor. Uh, it's just... I, I respect time. I'm like, hey, hey, five o'clock. That's when I leave. That's what I've been planning all day. I got to be at the doctor at five thirty, maybe even a little earlier. So, like, you're being kind of rude because you're making me late to something. But we are also very aware of time because we get a set time at a club, right? Eight thirty-five p.m. We get there eight twenty-five, eight thirty. Yeah, right? yeah. You have to be. So that's almost like program me to be very punctual. Always. True. So. When people are not punctual, it makes me a little crazy. Same, same. And and the funny thing is people go, oh, you get there uh, a little early because you don't want to miss your set. Like, no, I get there a little early because I don't want to ruin the show and fuck up everything and have people not be able to rely on me. It's yeah, more also, than just missing the I don't set. Want them to, I don't want the host to freak out. Where are you? Yes. You're just trying to make people's lives easier. Whereas most right. jobs, you can show up, you get there at 10 a.m. You can show up at 10, 15 and no one gives a shit. You no can't do that with stand-up. That's true. Good point. Good point. I mean, I will say I was at the Miami Improv and they were going, bending over backwards like, thank you so much for being on time. Thank you for not going long. And I'm like, Jesus, what kind of comics are here? Who was here last weekend? Paul Mooney? <laughs> I know. I didn't, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, I mean, it must be a lot of that kind of stuff. And uh, they were like, oh, just thank you. Paul Mooney's me. a legend, but I remember he would show up to Caroline's. Like, oh. He would show up like an hour late with a host. It's like, I've done an hour. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Great for the host. You get so much time, but uh, If Jesus, you're young. But if yeah, you're young. I don't know. If you, but yeah, but it's also scary when you you don't prepare an hour. You're like, I'm going to be 15 and then they're like just keep going you're like all right yeah i don't even have an hour i'm two years in or whatever yeah but it was a lot of like mencia type stuff where he would do two hours and there's a show after him and that kind of thing i so. remember one time i met the seller and uh we're hanging with like keith robinson and a few i don't remember who else was there but it was like a good group of comics were kicking it and uh Carlos Mencia walks in and he had lost a lot of weight. We didn't recognize him. So Keith goes, oh, look, it's it's Mike Vecchione. Like, we all laugh. <laughs> it's another comic who's a, like a thinner, yeah, car, fit, like a, guy. fit guy. And then Mencia, like, he kind of was probably awkward. And we're talking, I remember it was years ago, probably like nine years ago or something. And we were like, oh, what does a comic make if they sell out Gotham Comedy Club for a weekend? We're all kind of like asking. We're like, I don't know. And then Mencia just leans over the table, 75K. Damn. That's, that's what I get. That's him and in a all, nutshell. And we all kind of look at him like, but well, we still don't respect you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember I was like, you know what? Let me see him on stage. Let me see how he is. I gave it like three minutes and it was fucking dog shit. Damn. Well, there but you, you go. Knew that. Of course, of course. But uh, yeah. I just didn't want to say it into a microphone, but yeah. <laughs> well, well, that ship has sailed. Yeah, I guess so. I, I've heard some horror stories, like my friend opened for him and he made him sell merch and didn't give him any money for it and all that. And then he would be like, "I'm give, you're lucky I gave you some exposure tonight. And he's like, I'm a working comic. Like, what are you talking about? Jesus. Yeah, this was this weekend was a nightmare. And, and then he stole like four of his jokes. Yeah, exactly. You're so. lucky I gave you exposure. I'm taking your opener, your closer, <laughs> and two of your jokes in the middle. I know. It's a weird business. But uh, hey, we're lucky to be a part of it. Do we have a, an ad? 
Oh, we don't. Okay, just checking. Just checking. We might we might have to plug it in. I'm sure we'll have one by then. So, uh, all right. We'll plug. It'll be an awkward cut from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, folks. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Fireside Cocktails. Love the Fireside. I, I got two on my bar cart right now, and that's what you made it, folks. When you're on the bar cart, you're in the house, you're in my belly. Fireside is a cocktail in a bottle, not a mixer. It's the whole kit and caboodle. Get your favorite cocktail delivered directly to your door, completely ready to drink. Just add ice. Fireside makes small batch cocktails with high-quality ingredients that taste like you're getting an expensive drink from a snooty speakeasy. I keep it on the cart. I'm with the lady. I'm like, you want a Negroni? She's like, sure. I go in the kitchen. I crack some ice. I shake it up. I put it in there. She thinks I'm a, a mixologist. She it's, thinks you're Tom Cruise in cocktail. Yes. I, it, dude. It's except just, not a Scientologist. <laughs> it's it's amazing. You you just pour it over ice. It's perfect for this. We're in the studio. Yes. We don't have to bring a bunch of ingredients here. So true. It's nice. You pour it over drinks. You have a girl over. You know, you're just like, she's like, I want a cocktail. You don't have to go and take 20 minutes to right. make it. I don't right. know how long it takes you, whatever, but... The Negroni's a knockout. Not an easy one to get right, but they nailed it. I love a Negroni. Love a Manhattan too. Oh, Manhattan's my favorite. Negroni yeah. might be my second favorite. Yeah, they've, they've got they got both, and they're both taste great. But uh, that's it. You know, fireside cocktails as good as it gets. Best bars in the world. You know, and and this you can enjoy this whenever, wherever. They've taken the guesswork out of it. You know, you, you're the bartender, but they're really the bartender. So it's kind of nice. Uh-huh. And uh, go get drunk on us. Fireside Cocktails at drinkfireside.com. Use the code DRUNK for you get a 10% off right there. Fireside.com, use the code DRUNK. 10% off, support them because they support us. Drinkfireside.com. This is this is great stuff if you have your friends over, if you have a lady over. Yes. And you just want a quick quality cocktail. And let's be real, you do. Of course. I feel like this fireside mix, it's almost like the air uh, air fryer of drinks. You know, I want something top-notch good that I could never make, but with them, now I can do it. I love it. It tastes great. Goes down great. Just get ice. Anybody can do it. Get on it. Back to the show. Um Rec, let me think what I have. I listened to Brubaker. Oh, Brubeck. Brubeck, sorry. X loved it. I've heard him. I knew I knew that music for sure. Yeah, it's uh, pretty famous. Yeah, yeah. I definitely knew the music, but like, take five, take five, incredible. It's I don't know if you've seen the the Ebert doc, but I it's the I it's oh great. you haven't seen it. Life itself, it's so good. I, I was a huge them. Siskel and Ebert guy as a kid. Oh, they were great. I mean, yeah. they were so they were so good together, and I much preferred Ebert. But oh uh, yeah, I oh, think yeah. everyone did. But yeah, but they were so good. To, it's great that they were rivals, and that dive bar in Chicago. Yes. Oh, what what's is it that called place again? Called? The Green Awning. It's around the block yes, from Zanies. I know oh, God, exactly. I, I, and the, I, the tamale guy comes in real late. Oh, it's got all the caricatures on the wall of Old Chicago. Town House. Old Town Ale House. That's it. One of the greatest dive bars of all time. Great Paul Dane place. did an episode there too. The nude photo paintings. Yes, yes. And it's like Trump and uh, Bill Murray and John Candy. It's all these Chicago legends in there. It's fucking great. Yeah, I remember I, whenever I was there, I'd be working with like Adam, you know, Adam Burke? Yeah. Really funny Irish guy. And uh, we worked and we'd get fucking oh, yeah. housed there. And it's not expensive. It feels divey. The chairs are creaky. The it's floors are sticky. The best bar. And that it's was really Eber's great spot. That was Ebert's spot. Tell me about the doc. Oh, it's great. I mean, it just it kind of chronicles the whole show. Like he was a writer at the Sun, and he just worked his way up, and then he fell in love with movies, and he was became the movie critic, and then he got the show with Siskel. They hated each other. They go all into that. They got behind the scenes stuff where, where they're like, "Cut, yeah, fuck you. Don't ever talk to me like that again. Fuck you, you fat piece of shit." He's like, "All right, whatever. You suck. You're a hack." And they're like, "Whoa!" They show all that. And then uh, Siskel was kind of a, a badass, by the way, o- outside he? the show. Yeah, he was like at the Playboy Mansion, big big Coke guy. Yeah. Weird. Fun. You wouldn't know it. He looked like some dweeb Poindexter guy with the suit on. But but, uh, but they end up being friends in the end or what? They end up being friends in the end, and they, I guess, both got cancer. Crazy. Well, Eber, or Siskel and Eber, great cameo. One of my, I think one of the most underrated shows of all time. Every episode is on YouTube. Yes. If you haven't seen it, The Critic. Yes, so funny. James L. Brooks and I think it was Mike Reese and uh, Al Jean from The Simpsons. The Simpsons guys, it. yeah. But it's two seasons and it's fuck one of the best pilots for a show ever. It's brilliant. Yeah. 
just killer. It was too smart, I think, for for the because everybody's like, "Oh, I love The Simpsons," but this I don't get because it's all references. Fucking John Lovitz, dude, killed it. Just gold. Yeah, so good. Uh, yeah, it that stinks. Sh- that show deserved more. So it's on YouTube if you haven't seen it. You know what? Fuck it. That's my wreck this week. Ooh, Watch the pilot on YouTube. Ooh, good it's one. On, it's on YouTube. It is one of the most perfect pilots because you get who everyone. It, there's a Duke Phillips character. Who's, yeah, who's he's the boss. He's this rich, ripped asshole. Yeah, but he's. It's almost like if you like Jack Donahue on Thirty Rock, Alec Baldwin's character, you'll like this. Is like this character before that, right? Right. Where he's, but he's like a Southern boy. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and it opens. This is how he's introduced. A woman walks up to him. She's a reporter. She goes, "Duke Phillips, you're a captain of industry. You're incredibly wealthy. You were great in bed last night." That's how it opens, and he, and he just goes, "I have no one to envy." I, <laughs> I envy other people having me to envy. Uh, <laughs> Name a better way to introduce a character. Yeah, killer, killer. John Lovitz was great. They'd fuck with all the. They'd make fun of everybody on the show. All the actors. Yeah. Ah, uh, it was so good. So of its time too. So nineties. Great show. And there's a Cisco and Ebert episode in season two. It's yeah. pretty it's pretty fun. But like, god damn it. It was almost like Family Guy before Family Guy. They did so right. many cutaways. A lot of cutaways. That's so true. And it was darker and it was it felt a little more adult than, oh, than so other adult. cartoons. And they shit on movies. All like, yes. if you like movies, you'll like that. There's like a Marlon Brando thing. There's yeah. like they shit Orson on Wells. Shows. Orson Wells, the, the fish piece. sticks. Yeah, yeah, the fish sticks. So good, but fuck. I don't know if a, a younger people will even get the show because it's so many old references, but that was back when movies were like part of the zeitgeist. It was part of the world. Like you'd go back to school on Monday and be like, you saw Jurassic Park? Oh my God. You know, that was all part of the world now. Now it's like, oh yeah, what was that? Is that on Hulu? I don't know. I don't right. have Hulu and it's all different now. now. It felt we were more, I don't know, we were more together as a country, I think a little more, but now we have, we're all splintered. It was like, you got your podcast, you listen to that. I'm reading this book. What do you what channel is that on? Oh, I don't have Apple TV. You know, everybody's got their own thing now. Yeah, it's funny. I was just in the Apple store and it's like they're showing like that morning show thing. I'm like, oh, this show looks good. I'm like, will I ever watch it? Probably not. Probably it not. It looks good. It looks like this looks like a good show. Yeah. It's like supposed to be about like Matt Lauer, right? That type of vibe. Steve Krell is basically oh, Matt yeah, Lauer. Yeah, that's I right. bet there's a good show. That does sound good. I love never Steve gonna Carell. watch it. Probably never not gonna watch it. But multiple people have told Hanley just told me it was good. Okay, I hear Ted Lasso is amazing. I'll yeah. probably never watch that. The problem with Apple is they have like six shows. And you're like subscribe, and you're like, you guys, have, you've heard of Netflix, HBO, Amazon, and Hulu. Right? They have <laughs> yeah. more than six. Right, you got to build a catalog here. Yeah. At least buy some. Get Family Ties on there, just so you can have more shit. Jesus. That's why YouTube is always the number one for me. It's like The Critic, Larry Sanders. I can watch every Siskel and Ebert ever on YouTube. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, the Siskel and Eberts are cool. I remember watching one. I would watch a lot of them. I love their Midnight. They do a great review of Midnight Run, but I remember when Casino came out. Yeah. Siskel shits all over it. Yes. And Ebert's like, are you out of your mind? Like, <laughs> name name 10 better movies in this, this I know, year. And but you he, can't even give this a good review. He pulls off the whole, well, it's Goodfellas again. It's a little bit too similar. And you're like, I know, but it's still good. Yeah, it's funny. I remember dating someone and I showed, we saw The Irishman first. Yeah. That was the only Scorsese movie she'd seen. Ooh. Right? Tough She's start. Yeah. So then- I think Irishman is pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. But, but compared to his other shit. Yeah, but then she's like, a good fellow. She's like, oh, this is good. And I'm like, yeah. Right. But then she's like, Casino. She could like, I can't do it. And she's like, it's all the same movie. Ah, uh, that's not, it's so not true. It's just the similar actors and the similar cuts. The, the voiceover are... and the it's like yeah, good point. It's like do 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 yeah do 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 Earth Angel yeah a lot of Motown and then like and then you know everything ever since Tommy was a good fella yeah <laughs> that's like that's like four movies good point good point ever since i still love them all but you can't deny the similarity right what do you think so scorsese do you like when he would do weird movies like do you like after hours i love after hours how about uh king of comedy love king of comedy same i love them both yeah i like i like any movie that has some some style to it like it has a vision to it you know which i don't really think you see anymore there's so much marvel shit we keep we always go back to movies in this pod you, well we love movies yeah this is like this is like an unofficial movie pod but that's cool i mean we talk about a ton of other shit yes but like we're we're observational comics we love movies we love comedy it's gonna yeah. come back to that but i know i remember salix was telling me like you were talking to, you've talked about this you were doing a New Orleans after hours style. Yes. Like, you need to do I could see you being that type of character where you're out all night in New Orleans and it's a wacky. I could see horrible shit happening yeah. to you <laughs> where you're like the kind of Buster Keaton type of character where you're like, you can't control 
the craziness going around you and you're kind of like the the bad shit happens to you and you just have to deal with it. Yeah, 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 totally. And that's what the guy, the guy was watching After Hours. He's a fan of my comedy. He's like, this is a movie. And he just called me. I didn't know who he was. And I was like, I like it. Are you doing it? We're going to do it. Yeah, we found two guys to write it. They love the idea and they're writing it right now. Damn, yeah, that's a great idea. Who knows if we'll ever sell it, but uh, it's a work in progress. You know how it goes. We got to make our own shit, man. Yeah, we got to get creative. We got to hustle and... It's a, it's a little exhausting, but we're it's tired. Worth it. And yeah. we're drunk and we're but honestly, man, like I'm so happy. Like I'm seriously just getting back on the road and I'm lo- I'm so happy to be back. It's great to be back, isn't it? You feel like you have purpose again. You're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I just don't know how to write without torturing myself like this because I think the thing is if I don't force myself to do this many sets, I'm not gonna hate myself for not having enough new shit and I'm not gonna just have it. Yeah, I need to fall ass backwards in the jokes, dude. Yeah, same. That's the weird thing about creativity is that you can't really force. You can force getting a joke to be better and rewriting and tweaking, but you can't force an idea. Yeah, an idea's got to just hit you when it hits you. It's the worlds have to, or the stars have to align. You're in the shower, you're like, "That's it. It's about the midget," you know, and then it all comes together. And, but you can't really You're force like Ray it. You're like Rayleigh Odin Goodfellas, the midget, <laughs> the midget. What does he say? Kara? Uh, no, what's he? He's saying someone's name. They pulled the, the heist off. The Lufthansa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True heist, by the way. What do you think? Um, yeah, it's weird how much jokes hit me in the shower, and I think it's because it's like one of the last places we don't have access to our phone. I think it's so Once true. Once the phones become fully waterproof, it's over. Oh, God, don't even tell me that. I've already put my phone on the side of the, the wall and like play a podcast while I shower. I'm like, really? God, I'm, I'm an addict. Yeah, it's it's bad. I'll do music sometimes. I can't do, I'll do like, I'll do jazz sometimes. I'm like, I can't do words right now unless I need like a pump up. I need a boost and I'm about to do a show. Yeah, jazz is the best. I'll tell you another bit. Here's a wreck for you. Sales. That's the name of a band. Sales. S-A-L-E-S. Great, just chill music. Not high energy, not too low, but just like great background, hangout, kind of loungy music. It's almost jazzy, but a little more poppy, rocky. It's great. I'm going to listen to it. Check out Sales. If you want some low-key, just chill music. I'm pumped. I want to hear it. Have you listen to Oscar Peterson too from last week? You'll like. Oh him. yeah, I gotta check that Oscar. out. If you like Brubeck, you'll like him. I'll do an Oscar Peterson. Uh, I'm a big Pandora guy, so I got all my stations. So I'll just make You're one still, for him. I, I haven't done Pandora forever. I'm old school. I like Pandora. I, I stick with it. I hate the ads, but I like that it mixes it up a just little. Pay. So was it like two dollars a month? No, is, is it? it? It's got to be ten. <laughs> is, that, is that breaking your bank? Well, I don't want to put a get a credit card out, fill it in. Oh, you got the QR code wrong or the CVR or whatever the back. I don't know. I'm horrible at filling anything out. I feel out. like this is going to take you less than a minute. To do. Everybody says that. It's kind of like a cooking show. They go, oh, it's so easy to make a quiche. You can make this in 10 minutes. And I'm like, I crack an egg. It lands on my foot. The, the oven doesn't work. You know, uh, the, the paprika goes everywhere. It's never easy. Is this? Yeah, I don't know, man. I tried to sign up for Robin Hood. They're like, we're going to process your shit. What's that? that that's your, the stocks, the app, the stock oh, app. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm going to buy some crypto. I'm going to get some Dogecoin and uh, take over the world. And 20 minutes later, I'm like, I need a bank statement. Is this a bank statement? No, that's my social security. Life is exhausting. It's exhausting. Then you forget the password and it's, it's a nightmare. We're so like, you're like me in that anytime you're not doing something comedy related or working on stand up, you feel like you're wasting time. I'm wasting time and I'm not good at it. I'm the same way. If I'm not working on a bit or working on something that is joke related, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I'm the same way. That's why I tweet so much. Cause I'm like, all right, this counts as a joke. And I feel, I just kind of relax for a second. It's a horrible way to live, but I guess it right it creates work. Yeah, we're broken. Yeah. Anyway. That's uh, why the, the ladies hate us. <laughs> we produce fun work, but uh Should we do emails? Oh yeah, we'll do uh, do an email. This is what uh, uh this is basically the Patreon. You email us, we read them, we comment, we riff, we chat, we chop it up. Send us your peeves, your wrecks, your drinks. We Anything so you got. Many. Yeah, we should wrap it up soon. But, uh, uh, okay, peeve from Corey Reeves. I like ooh, it. That's, good rhyme. segment. When two people sit on the same side of the booth at a restaurant, 
and singing happy birthday to an adult at a restaurant. Mm. I'm okay with the booth. I mean, it's, like, I'm okay it's, your, with the booth. it's your booth. You do here, here. You it's, it's your it. booth. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm definitely fine with the booth sitting, but I the, here's where I go. I've, I've been drinking. Here's where I go with the uh, the birthday thing. I prefer a man. I like a guy. the The exact correlation to how much I like a guy is to how much he celebrates his birthday. That's a good point. If a guy's like all over his birthday, hey, it's my birthday coming up. Uh, we got to go crazy. We got to do this. I'm like, you're dead to me. If a guy's like, you know, it's my birthday today. I'm like, I love you. And also, if it's like a birthday where you're like, hey, let's just get like a do like lunch with four people. That's like a great birthday. Why would yes. you have like a thirty person birthday? So I'm with true. you. I, I've never been a big uh, people that celebrate their birthday. You know what though? We're also we get a lot of attention. Ah, uh, we're. Good con- point. I mean, it's the same reason that you and I never want a big wedding. It's Hate the same a big reason wedding. We don't want a big a big birthday. Uh, we get enough. We, I mean, we do stand up every night. It's kind of like people are bir- applauding, and birthdays are going to stress us out way more than a show. Oh. It's just people like I'm here, and we're like, "Fuck! All right, I gotta <laughs> deal with this over here. This guy's from summer camp. This guy's from school. This guy's right. a comedian. I got to work on all three. You just it's, work in a room. You're like, it's, kill me. It's a nightmare. I never want a, bir- a big That's birthday. A great point. There's an episode of Seinfeld where they're all in Jerry's apartment, and, and Kramer's like, "Oh, birthdays are the worst. You got to talk to everybody. All your friends are there that you don't even like." And Jerry goes, "Yeah, every day's." my birthday because they're all in his house it's a great joke but yeah it's so true birthdays are hell and we get a ton of attention and i I was always like why do people like a big wedding it's a nightmare it's always some bridezilla her hair's on fire she's running around they never look happy at the wedding they never look happy happy for the first hour because they're married have you seen them by the end of the night they're just like get me out of here i know it's like a fucking hostage video i know and then they always end up in like the office of the building and they're like oh i gotta i need a minute i'm like that's my whole life you in that office <laughs> that's your next special title i need a minute <laughs> hey that's not bad it's not bad i need a minute the 59 of them are horrible i need one good one but yeah oh i had a point yeah the birthday thing if you celebrate your birthday too much it's another good title what I, I had a point i had a point i lost it but yeah the birthday guy who can't? Who needs to celebrate his birthday? I'm like, ah, come on, man. You're right. It's a small gathering. Let's get lunch. Let's hang out. It's my birthday week. Ooh, that's eat, a red flag. Eat the fattest part of my ass. It's my birthday. Let me let me come up for, with seven excuses real quick. It's your birthday <laughs> week. Shut up. What do you think about a destination wedding? I mean, it's. it's I'll a, never. I mean, it's crazy. It's, by the way, it's a destination wedding. If I have to buy a plane ticket, I don't care if you live in another state. It's still a destination. Oh, I still have to travel. That's a great point. But if you do it in like we're do, we're getting married in Rome, I'm like, oh, cool. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. I'm happy to lose this friendship. Right, Bronx. Unless in, unless you don't mind if I don't go. If you if they don't mind, I mean, look, if that's your wedding, that's your day. If you want to be an extravagant uh, twat, yes, enjoy it. Yes, the both of you. Extravagant but, twat, great special. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you. Rome, like, also no gift. The flight was a gift. Yeah, I can't bring you a, 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 a you know a charcuterie plate or whatever the yeah. hell a, a mixer you know or a blender. I went to Rome. Yeah. That's it. I bought you a toaster. I'm going to throw it in your tub at <laughs> night. It's a restoration hardware. <laughs> You're going to like it for two seconds <laughs> while you roast. Uh, yeah, I hate, hate, oh, I hate it all. I mean, I feel like it's been done to death, but I, I really hate a destination wedding. Yeah, but you're right, though. People don't ever get that attention, so this is their moment. This, this is, is their, their moment, special. But then it's funny. It's like the way we get, smothered when we're at a show and we're like fuck here that you could see it turn for them where they're like this was going to be great and then there is a moment at that wedding where they yes. all are like fuck this is annoying oh yeah like imagine if you did a show and like it's annoying already the groups of friends you have to like kind of divvy up and figure out to make work right and there's always that friend that you kind of have to look after yeah there's some friends that come out and you can kind of be like all right well they can figure it out they can yes they're charming they can shoot the shit they can work a room mm-hmm. but then there's one friend who like just hangs on your arm yes and like, fuck i'm babysitting now too this is crazy and then you know add your grandmother and aunt and then right. like your whatever your partner's family to that it's way harder way harder and i'll throw this out there and this is going to rus- rustle some feathers but russell ruffle, ruffle. 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 thank russell. you <laughs> russell crow <laughs> ruffle feathers is uh the people who we talk about how i much i hate people coming late People who come early is also bad. Yeah. Like the guy, I had a, a video shoot last week, and my friend, I said, he's like, 
I'll be at your house by 9 a.m. So I said, all right, 9 a.m., it's pretty early, but we got to do the shoot. I get it. We're starting early. Going to get ahead of it. Calls me at 8, 10. Oh, my God. I'm in your neighborhood. I'm like, ah, those 50 minutes are so precious. I need, it's 8 in the morning. I need every minute. I got to milk it. You said 9 a.m. I planned on 9 a.m. And I told him that. He was like, I get it. You said 9 a.m. So I, poor guy, had to walk around and get a bagel. But Poor guy. Should have planned his time better. I know. You're, you're the poor me. guy. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're a good friend. Get a fucking oatmeal, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get an orange juice and a coffee. I got 50 minutes and I'm going to meditate. Were and you able to off. fall back asleep? No. God, no. I can't fall back asleep. My sleep schedule is a disaster. Same. Same. I slept till 10 today and that was like a miracle. I either wake up at like 8.45 or noon. There's no middle ground. It's It's gotten dark. Well, the booze doesn't help the sleep The sleep cycle. The booze is horrible for sleeping. It's, yeah, it's you ever bad take for booze most things. and melatonin and you're like, <laughs> I just had a dream I was getting stabbed by like a bunch of little monkeys. Like this can't be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like stabbing you. You're like, oh, oh, and then you wake up and you're like... That was three hours, yeah. I think. That was rough. <laughs> you know what that means? Your mom is smothering. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you love the guy with the dream book? Oh, oh yeah. I had, a, I had a bit I was working on about this. Oh, really? It hit Monday. It hadn't been hitting, but it was about oh. how... It was about how... Um, did I ever tell you this joke? Mm-mm. Um, fuck. Oh, we got to do a bit. Jesus. Maybe I, maybe that's the one I'll do. I wonder if I've done it on here. Um, Let me look. I love facial recognition, by the way. This saves me all the password. Just the face. I'm like, thank God. Isn't that nice? I don't. I, I just do the finger. I don't know. Oh, the finger's good too. Yeah. This sounds weird. It does sound weird. Uh, yeah, this was I like, having it. I had a. I dream about dead rodents, uh -huh. and I looked what up. I, I might have done this on the pod before, but it, I've never I heard said, it. But it, I mean, you're also a drunk. True. Uh, it just said, I looked up, it said, could signify new beginnings. That's what dead rodents could be. Mm. I'm like, cool, could we get a different delivery system? Right, right. <laughs> like, I just had a dream about babies getting stabbed in the face. You're like, ooh, romantic possibilities await. <laughs> That's great. Have I done that on this, Harry? I've never heard All it. All right, good. That's yeah, funny. I'll bring it back. I was going to drop it. I'm, I, I glitted it at Will City Winery show on Monday, and I was not doing great in that hit. I'm like, all right, we got him back. That's one good thing about doing a lot of sets. You're like, let me try this super old bit that was kind of shaky, and then boom, you fix it. Boom. Uh, is this anything? Um, so, excuse me. I was doing a bunch of racial material at a show, and uh, this black guy yelled out. He goes, you're white. What do you know about racism? And I, I riffed. I was like, well, I think we're the best at it. And it <laughs> we hit. got a we huge laugh. It? What's that? We invented it? Yeah, like we, we're we the best at it. We're an ex I'm an expert. What are you talking about? Like, which one is it? Are we, you know, racist or are we not know anything about racism? So I, I see his point, obviously, but I thought it could be a fun joke. Like, what do you know about racism? Well, I think we're the best. Yeah. What do I know? I'm an expert. What did Michael Jordan know about basketball? Right. I don't know. Seemed like he kept winning at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Not that I like Michael Jordan. I mean, he's black. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, um, could be something there. Racism. Yeah, there's something funny about this bit. I hope so. We uh, we invented. Yeah, we we're the best at it. Yeah, like I, we're like sous chefs. You know, we're going. Mm, that's a little like we're, it's like wine. You know, I'm, I'm it's like all a the thing where you're also trying to not do it, but you but like, uh -huh. but you know that you guys are. Hmm. It's a it's an interesting joke because it. It's teetering on a couple different things. Think of a chef was trying not to cook something and he right. kept doing it. Right, yeah, yeah. We're great at, it's almost like Rambo or something like that where like, you gotta come back out there and like, you're the best, man, you're the best. And we're like, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Like, no, you're great at this. You know, where they have to pull the the, the commando out of the, the log cabin in the woods because he's too good, we need you. It's gotta be something about getting rid of it though. Like, like uh... Hey, you're trying not to do it. Maybe other people are doing it because you don't want to make it about you. Mm -hmm. You want to make it about other people. Like, it's almost like it's like you're a chef and that's the brunch menu. You're like, this is we're not proud of this, but that we this is our oh. this is kind of our leftovers. Oh, interesting. <laughs> this is leftovers from <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like leftovers from the other generation. You know, you kind right. of maybe make it about like past generations. We're trying to get rid. We're trying to ease. We're trying to wean off this, but we still need to get. We still need to get customers. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know no. How to say it. Maybe it's it's kind of too. I mentioned this last week. Like Frank Abagnale is great at check fraud, but he's like, I'm trying to stop. And they're like, Yeah, but the FBI wants you. So like, I could go in and help. You know, in a way, like I'm I'm good at this horrible thing, which is 
immoral, but but you're not good at being racist. Like, you're I, not, that's, that's true. The other that's thing is, like, you don't want to make it like that. I think is the that's flaw with point. the premise. Like you don't want to be like you're not a racist guy. No. So so I think. You you don't make that part of the bit. I think right. the bit has got to be like <laughs> like true. I'm good at it, and everyone's like, "What? What are you?" Right, doing? right. It's right. got to be like, um, hmm. Yeah, it's 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 tough because we're we're the best. White people are the best at Histo- racism. I would say historically we're the best. Uh, I don't want to make it about now. Aha, uh-huh. that's good. Historically we're the best at it. I mean, yeah. check the history books. Yeah, we're we're working on it. Right, right. There's a lot of documentation of us. What's something we're working it. on? Think about what we're working on. What are we working on? Uh, climate change. Uh, it's kind of like obesity. Oh, we're doing our best, but every once in a while you see a guy and you're like, "Ooh, that ain't good." <laughs> right. The only problem is no one ever says. Uh, Either way, it's in Florida. <laughs> That's not a bad tag. All right, I'll noodle, but that's a good historically is a good good way to go with it. It's something there. I wouldn't make it about you is my only thing because you're not racist. So don't make yourself the butt of the joke just for the joke. It's not sure. True. I think uh, there's something here though for sure. Yeah, what but I am white, white. What do white people know about racism? I don't know. Have you read a history book? Aha. Uh-huh. We know a lot. Yeah, it's one of the rare jokes. We, we don't know we... a lot about receiving it. Right. Right. We're oh, like, that's we're like, good. We're like pitchers, and you're and everyone else is like catchers. Right. We're throwing heat. <laughs> yeah, we're batting a, a hundred or a thousand. Know. Yeah, no, that's good. There's it's one of the there. few jokes where you don't want to make it personal. Most jokes are better when they're personal. No, this, this is an is observational joke. Definitely observational. Um, make sure know. to email us. We might be drunkpod at gmail dot com. Leave us a review on Apple. See Mark and myself on the road. I think. This coming out yes. l- later. So I just came out of Cleveland, I guess. This came out. So see me in Spokane, Seattle added shows, uh, Salt Lake, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Arlington, Virginia. Uh, fuck, all over, man. I, I got a lot of dates coming up. Raleigh. Go to samuel.com slash shows. There's a lot of dates added. Just added um, just added Atlanta for later this year and just added Columbus as well. So adding dates, but uh, go see me. And Mark, where are you going to be, man? Hell yeah. That's some good good cities you're going to. I'm going to be at uh, McGooby's in Baltimore. Come out to that. Lord knows I need you. That can be a tough room. Hard no, for no, no, funny bone. Room. Okay, well, yeah, that's yeah. a tough one. Uh, Hard for stuff. <laughs> Virginia Beach, I've never been to in my life. That could be interesting. Uh, helium in Portland, that'll be fun. I I'll love be, Portland. I'll be there in August. I can't wait. I got family and friends there. I can't, I can't wait. Great town. Syracuse, ooh, Toledo. Don't oh, kill boy. yourself in Syracuse. Suicide capital of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Houston, Port, uh, Fe- uh, Fe- uh, Helium in Philly, and uh, Buffalo. Bet. Woo, Dayton. I'm, I'm visiting like the Ironworks Union here. I'm going to all the blue collar towns. I'm here. doing all these rooms too. I'm doing I'm doing helium, uh, Philly, and Buffalo too. But later in the September and December, I think. Oh, there you go. Oh man, I'm in the Bray Improv. That'll be a treat. That's is, that, is that great? Oh, it's Orange County. It's just beach and beautiful people. Then you're like, why are you laughing? You guys have everything. You're am gorgeous. I, am I crazy to? So it's like Soho House. No, no, but they're they're good. They laugh. What is it weird? I'm going. Um, I'm on the road like every weekend this year, pretty much. Is that a mistake, or you think I go crazy on the road? Should I take wait, the wait, weekend? the whole year? Pretty much till I, Christmas. I think I'm 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 close to being out every weekend of the year. I have like maybe four weekends open through the end of the year. I would hold off on those just really? to just to stay sane. I mean, I I don't go. I'm not going the whole, you know, I got a, a vacation at one point plan with the lady and you want to be able to go to a wedding if you, if it pops up. I don't know. That you want to go to a wedding after this fucking to, rant you just said. I, I don't want to go, but I'm going to, I, you know, I got, I got a friend getting married and he already asked me like, please block this off. It's in August. So I blocked it off. I know it's a nightmare. I'm already dreading it. It's five months away, but I'll go. He asked me directly you'll be miserable the whole time of course of course that's what they're at when you, when you ask a comic to go to your wedding you were saying w- do you mind being <laughs> miserable <laughs> and that's what i say to him about getting married but <laughs> but it's in boston i'll suck it up whatever it's one night out of my life one night it's nothing yeah and it's important to him and, and no, the no, wife you so. need you need to go i yeah. get it for, for for your good friends if it's a good friend it's a good friend so i'll be there but uh yeah other than that i mean Maybe, maybe I'd say okay, but I think about like September, October, you're gonna get a little burnt. I'm gonna get burnt, but I also am like, 
it's hard to say no, man. It is. It is. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a rough year. It's hard to say no to shit. Totally. And we got a lot in the tank. We got to get it out. But it's good money. And it's, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't mind the road. but I like it too. But we're, we're, we're not like everybody else in that way. That's true. That's true. We're uh, we're we're drifters, you know. We we're married to the sea, as they say. <laughs> married to the sea. Yeah, that's what Joe listed about us, right? I know. Yeah, that it, we're married to the sea. He nailed when he said that. I was like, oh man, that would, that hurt so good. You're right. <laughs> There's a couple married to the sea guys out there, and they don't seem happy. But yeah. uh, as long as we keep an eye on it, it's like drinking. Don't think we're keeping an eye on any of it. <laughs> but we'll keep an eye on you. Thanks for listening, guys. Here, here. See you next week.